So I'm Emily miller Lair. I am a dental hygienist as well, and I am the uh, Academic and Industry Relations Manager for Aspen Dental. We have two amazing clinical dental hygienists here with us, and I'll let them share a little bit about themselves. Um, Holly, go ahead and get started. Tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do with Aspen. So I'm Holly. I'm originally from the west side. If you guys, boy, if you guys are there, you know, Maple Valley, that area, like Kent, that's where I'm from. I went to Eastern, so I came over to this side of the state, and now I just live permanently in Spokane. I started with Aspen Dental right out of hygiene school. It was one of the first places I interviewed with and fell in love with the whole idea of how it was all run. So I started working there, um, and I've been the lead hygienist since two weeks of working with Aspen, and then recently I've been promoted to territory manager of hygiene support. So. I'm slowly making my way towards that. <laughs> Congratulations. Yay, thank you. <laughs> Any pets? I have one puppy. He's six months old. His name is Oakley. He's an Australian Shepherd. He's downstairs. <laughs> Aw, <laughs> well, if we hear barking, we'll know it's little Oakley just missing his mama. <laughs> All right, Zulette, tell us a little bit about yourself and your, your story with Aspen. Hi there. Yes. Um, my name is Sulet. I'm actually uh, from Mexico. I've been living here for 20 years, so I'm pretty much from here anyway. So um, I become a dental hygienist about seven years ago and uh, been working for private DSOs. I've been temping um, in different places prior to be part of the Aspen family. So with Aspen, I've been for about two years now. And um, a year in, I was a lead hygienist um, of my Wilmont office here in Tucson, Arizona. So I'm very excited to uh, share with you all the information that, you know, as hygienists, we can provide so you can make decisions and you can, you know, make the best um, in your careers. Um, I do have three doggies. Uh, two of them, my husband took them because there's no way I will be able to do this. Um, but <laughs> my Chihuahua, she's definitely my lap dog. So she's sitting right here looking at me. It's like, who are you talking to, mommy? Um, <laughs> yeah, she's, she's just here with me. And yeah, I'm, I'm here for you. I'm here for you. I love that. And, and that's what tonight is all about. Um, I want students to feel like they can ask any questions they want and get honest answers from people who do it. Um, we've, I'll do a little housekeeping. It looks like you've already figured it out, but you can ask questions in the Q&A and we've got a few coming that, uh, that are already up. And uh, that is in the, if you hover over the lower part of your Zoom, you should get to the Q&A and ask questions through that. And um, you might see me looking over during the talking. That's just me reading the next question. I'm not uh, playing some exciting game or got something else going in the background. Um, it's just prepping for the next question. So without further ado, you guys are really active. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and ask some questions. It looks like the first question we have um, is what is the difference between corporate dentistry and private practice? And I probably should have started out by saying, um, Officially, we're not corporate dentistry. We are a dental service organization. Um, and I'll let you all t speak to that a little more. So uh, Zulet, for you, what's the difference between um, like a corporate or a DSO um, organization and a private practice? So as I mentioned before, I was able to work for private offices before prior to Aspen and uh, uh, corporations and um, dental supportive, you know, organizations. So what I can tell you about the difference for me will be like private offices, you are um, the, you know, right hand of the dentist, um, the dentist will tell you, hey, this patient needs um, an adult profi, this patient needs um, the scaling and planing. Um, with the dental support organization, uh, I feel like I have a little bit more as far as um, being more involved in, in who I am as a dental hygienist. So mm -hmm. I can tell you that I noticed a difference right away. If you would like to be a little bit more of a hygienist and not being, you know, expanding your knowledge as to what else you can do, the dental private is for you. But if you're looking into the growth and development as far as a hygienist, 
-hmm. you know, the Dental Support Association is pretty much the, um, the, the answer for you. Um, you know, we get benefits, uh, we get uh, the differences that we have a network of people uh, working with us and supporting us. So that's the best thing that I can tell you in the difference why I like to be part of the, the Aspen family. I love that. Holly, what about you? Uh, what, what do you feel the difference is between a dental service organization and um, a private practice? Now you, you have, did you work private practice at all like as a dental assistant or anything? Okay, I guess just speak to a DSO and what you feel the difference is. <laughs> yeah, um, I would say definitely there's a difference in owning what you do. So generally in private practice, I feel as if it's the doctor's business and he's running it how he sees fit or she. Um, and within, at least within Aspen, I feel as if the hygiene business is my own. So I'm 100% in control. I am able to go in, tell patients what treatment they need. I'm able to, you know, navigate my schedule and make things how I see fit. So there's more, I feel like control on my end of things, as well as it can be different office to office because you can, your doctor might not own your practice. So there's a different dynamic, I almost feel like, between you and the doctor, because you're both almost equals working together. Right. I like that. You're both employees. Um, so just to share a little bit too about DSOs, they are doctor owned, um, but like Holly was sharing, her doctor might own a few practices and work out of one and an associate or a... Um, um, MCD might also work with her. So they're more like employees. So all of the Aspens are owned by a dentist, but they're supported by Aspen Dental Management. So someone like me, I work for Aspen Dental Management in supporting um, our growth in, um, in student areas. And uh, Holly just talked about her new position. She's going to be supporting hygienists and there's just a lot of support with DSOs. So for example, um, I had somebody talk about this the other day. They, they didn't know what benefits to get. Like they're a new employee and you know, a private practice doctor is fantastic, but they don't have a dedicated HR person. They don't have a dedicated procurement person. They don't have a dedicated person that um, tests out equipment to decide what we should buy. Um, they don't have somebody who comes up with like um, safety procedures, you know? So. So the office is responsible for all of those things. So a lot of the pressure of what it takes to run a business is taken off of you or given guidance that makes it very easy so that you can focus on, and, and that's what these two said so beautifully, your work and what you do instead of focusing on, on um, uh, little things all the time. You really get support. I guess that's how I would say it. So Beautiful, beautiful answers, guys. Okay, let me go to the next thing. Ooh, I like the first question. I'm gonna ask that at the end though. Okay, any tips for transitioning from dental hygiene student to working? That's so funny that you asked that because Zulette and I were just talking about this a second ago. Um, anything we should do as students to make the transition smooth? So um, Zulette, you are a trainer extraordinaire and you have someone who just got licensed Tuesday that you were chatting about. Yeah. So um, you wanna talk a, a little bit about uh, advice for transitioning and, and the support that was given to this um, or to our employees and regular, and regular support and the support that was given to the most recent hygienist you're working with. Yeah, um, so I'm happy to you know, help other hygienists to get that transition smooth. So my idea, and I always tell, you know, that the new associate, my new hygienist is, look, you already know this. You've been working as a hygienist, you went to school and you've been dealing with patients pretty much at the beginning of your, of your degree. So if someone asks you, you already have that experience. So Coming to what I call the real world is like, it's just continue, continue doing it. It's just the difference is that yes, you're going to see more patients and yes, you're going to make sure that you provide the best, the best patient care for, for them. So 
what I will say is that be confident. Don't, don't stress about it too much. I know we're all going to be like, oh my gosh, it's like, I don't know how to treat this patient or I feel nervous. We all felt nervous. I remember and I was telling uh, Emily here <laughs> on my first, uh, you know, anesthesia patient, I saw my hand going like waving, waving until I actually got to the, you know, the patient's mouth. And, you know, my patient was very, you know, confident. It's like, yeah, do it. Um, I'm good. I'm good. And I was like, oh, shaking, shaking, obviously with the mask didn't see my mouth open um but when I was in there I, I just the only thing that I could tell is like because I noticed I was very nervous I said to my patient I'm so sorry I just didn't have any breakfast today but you know the thinking is it was pretty much because I was nervous but you know after that after the that first injection you you got it you know you you already know what to do you already passed those tests those national boards that they were so hard to pass so if you pass them, it's because you already know it. So yeah. just go ahead and continue doing it. That's all. Be confident. Know know yourself in that sense. So that's my. Uh, that's I my, could my I could not agree more. I remember feeling like, and these feelings are normal. I think just accept that that's a normal thing. You're not crazy. <laughs> this is how people feel in this situation. I remember feeling like, oh my gosh, they're gonna know. <laughs> Like they're totally going to know it's my first day. And guess what? No one did. And if they did, everybody has a first day, right? So um, you're getting an excellent education. I've heard nothing but excellent things about your program. I think just know that you've got this. That's huge. Um, Holly, I know that you've also done some training. Can you speak to, to, to help people understand? Because Aspen knows that, that new hygienists or people new to Aspen might be anxious about learning or how, how to do things, you know. Um, can you talk a little bit about our training and what training looks like for the typical hygienist coming in? Yeah, so generally when you come in, you're gonna be with the hygienist who is training you the whole time. I, even when I was training, I never felt like they just threw me to the wolves and said, hope you do well. Um, so you are, they walk you through everything. You're going to go through everything step-by-step. Step. You're going to watch someone do it before you do it. They, you will be completely prepared to navigate everything within Aspen and to see patients by the time that you're actually seeing them. And the biggest thing is just to be patient with yourself. Do not expect that you are just immediately going to be an all-star, like just so fast and get through everything. Like be patient. You are still going to learn and also just communicate with those around you. I've never been in an Aspen dental office where the front to back dental assistants, doctors, front staff wasn't more than happy to help me with anything that I got confused about. I love that. That's a really, really good point. Just ask. And that's what people are here to do is to help each other. Right. Um, but the really cool thing about Aspen too, is for any new employee, uh, not employee, but dental hygienist, there's a two week training program. Um, it's online and in person. So it's hybrid. You get to watch, you have a mentor. Um, and then three months afterwards, you actually get a more advanced training program. So it's, it's really built to, for your, you to succeed and not get that. I didn't get that because I did not have the good fortune of starting with Aspen many years. I don't even know if Aspens were in Arizona. <laughs> I'm dating myself when I um, graduated, but um, I didn't get that. And you just kind of are in there and you're pretending, but really with Aspen, you're getting that two weeks to slowly go in. And I've, I've had occasionally people um, that may have required more time or people like we were waiting on licenses for. So there's, there's different things too, but the, the typical hygienist, no matter where you come from, you're going to get two weeks of training, um, and a mentor and a TMHS or territory manager of hygiene support, all dedicated to your success. So, um, there's a lot of support here. <laughs> it's really nice if you're new. It's nice if you're not new too, but I think there's a lot of support for, for um, student hygienists. So this is a great question. And it's been, if it's been a while for you guys, it's okay to say it. But um, the question is what are interviews like and what should we ask while interviewing? Uh, Holly, what are your thoughts there? 
Well, I just interviewed for my new position. Oh, that's right. So. <laughs> <laughs> but I also really vividly remember interviewing for Aspen because I was pretty nervous. But essentially, in the interview, they want to get to know you. They want to know who you are as a person, you know, how your personality is, what you're looking for in a dental practice. So when you go into an interview, remember, it's just as important, important for you to find your dental fit as it is for them to find someone who fits their office. So just remember that the things that you're looking for that you want to get out of a practice to ask those questions about, I always ask what a typical day would look like for me, um, kind of how like success is measured within my profession, just so that I understood what sort of expectations would be set for me. But essentially going into the interview just as confident as possible and knowing full well that your skills are above and beyond what they want and just knowing that you are a great hygienist and they just need to make sure that you're going to be a good team player, good fit for whatever office you're interviewing for. I love that. One of my pro tips is I now don't do this in the parking lot, depending on the type of music you have, but on the way, I always play my favorite music and like sing really loud so that I can calm myself down and, and like build up my confidence when I come in there. So uh, powerful music. Uh, of course, you should probably prepare more than that, but it's helpful. <laughs> Zulette, what about you? What kind of questions um, should, what are interviews like and what should they ask while interviewing? So uh, by personal experience, I, I always wanted to know um, what this office has to offer for me. So be prepared to ask those questions. Um, you know, be confident, as Holly said, uh, be a team player, uh, show your traits, show your values. They want to know who you are as a person. They want to know that you're going to be taking care of the patients. Um, do never say, I do not know if they ask you a question. Just, you know, let them know, hey, uh, um, give me a couple minutes to think about that question. I was not prepared. It's better than saying, I do not know. Um, what the interviews are like is like, they can be very nervous depending who you're seeing. Um, like, like Emily was saying, it's just, uh, you know, calm, your, calm yourself. It's not a big of deal. Just always take it as a, as a good experience for, you know, if it doesn't happen one time, it's only going to give you the experience to move to the next one and move to the next one. You're always going to learn something. So, um, yeah, that was for me, for me, I felt pretty confident about what I, who I am as a hygienist and what my skills are. But my idea was to know what the other office will be able to provide for me. So that was pretty much my main question. Yeah. I would say for me, I, I would, I would be prepared um, to answer questions like, where do you see yourself in five years? And frankly, whoever you're interviewing with, the answer is working for them. <laughs> that that's yeah. that's that's really the answer um, <laughs> um that would be my guess anyway um another thing uh, that i would suggest is if you don't get the job oftentimes it's good feedback for you and it also shows a lot of integrity it makes them think about how why didn't we choose this person i always write a letter saying you know i'm glad you found your perfect candidate I can see that it wasn't me. What could I do in the future to be um, better for you? Or what could I do in the future that would make me a better candidate? And that really speaks volumes. And then thank you notes. When you leave, go to the dollar store before your interview. When you leave, just a really simple handwritten note that you hand bring back into the front office for the people that interviewed you. And I can tell you that that, that is not done a lot. I've interviewed a lot. That is not done a lot and it is never forgotten. And it has been the difference between person A and person B. So I, I would really highly suggest if that's the job you really, really want, Google how to write a thank you note, <laughs> write a thank you note in the car and bring it up to the front. Um, and then also I think, if, I'm sorry, I'm giving too many tips here. Another interview tip is they're always going to ask you um, what your greatest weakness is. And I really look up how to answer the question. I can tell you how to not answer that question is to say like, my greatest weakness is I try too hard or, you know, I'm, I'm too good. You know, that, that comes off as arrogant and, and disingenuine. 
it's really better to actually say what you struggle with and what you're doing to improve it. So, you know, it could be your time management. So you're timing yourself and making sure that you're, you're completing patients in time. Um, you could share feedback that somebody's given you before and then talk about what you're doing to change that feedback. So that tells that like you're listening and that you look to make changes. So I love interviewing. I could do a whole thing on this. If you guys want it, I'm available, but I'm over talking right now. So I want to give everybody else a chance because you came to ask them questions, not me. Um, so let me look again. Oh, this is kind of what um, Zulette was talking about earlier. What types of development opportunities does Aspen offer dental hygienists? Zoo, I know you kind of alluded to this earlier. I'll have you start and then we'll, we'll ask Holly the same thing. Sure. Um, as I mentioned to you, something that I really was, uh, you know, uh, drawn to Aspen was the fact that they will offer a lot of opportunities here. So the sky is the limit here with Aspen. Um, you can be a territory manager, support hygienist. You can be the director in um, hygiene too. And, you know, Pacific, you know, any, anywhere in the United States. So <laughs> as I mentioned, the sky's the limit for you. If you want to go ahead and do the office manager, you can go ahead and do that. If you want to do dental assistance, you can go ahead and do that. If you want to go ahead and do uh, um, uh, anything, really, 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 Aspen would not stop you from doing what you like. And that's the perfect thing for me because you never know what situation will come in the future for me that I will be able to maybe step down or maybe step up a little bit more in, in what I'm doing. Hygiene is, the clinical hygiene is always been in my mind and always been in my heart. But like I said, you never know what you're going to encounter in the future. So I'm always thinking about, you know, like same with Holly getting her territory manager position there too. So it's like, it's it's a great opportunity. You, you don't, you don't get stopped you don't get limitations you will be the only limitation in this case so yeah I, I'll say go for it <laughs> yeah I, I couldn't agree more as far as uh, trajectory and opportunity um, never in my life did I think I would go from doing clinical dental hygiene to to an academic support role um, I, I didn't even think that existed and, and I frankly don't think it exists outside of Aspen so, you know, positions like this, we have VPs who are dental hygienists. We have um, directors that are dental hygienists. We have ops directors that are dental hygienists. Really anywhere you wanna look in the organization. Um, I'm even curious about HR now. That's somewhere I haven't looked. There is probably somebody who's a dental hygienist who's doing that. Um, I, I, I think this company looks at dental hygienists differently. Um, then I've seen it. I, I hope that I start seeing it everywhere. I haven't seen it everywhere, but my hope is that we're a trendsetter and this keeps helping um, all hygienists because I, I want it for everyone. I want everyone to feel like they have these opportunities like we do. Um, Holly, what about you? What kind of um, development opportunities um, are available that we may not have gone over yet um, or even ones that we have at Aspen? Yeah, so just like you guys were already saying, it's very, um, you're very able to move kind of throughout whatever journey you want within Aspen. I liked the fact that you could advance your career within Aspen, so that's why I chose it, and I worked hard, and you definitely get out of it what you put in, and here I am, and I'm getting, you know, promoted to territory manager, so you definitely, it's achievable, um, as far as development on the other side of things, in terms of developing yourself as a hygienist for learning, there is hygiene, um, HOP is what we call it, but hygiene orientation program. Yes, I was like, <laughs> oh my gosh, we use so many acronyms. I yeah. don't. <laughs> um, so that is a mine was three day kind of just overview of not only skills as a clinician but how to further your Aspen business and then there are a plethora of CE courses that are so many Aspen. CEs <laughs> yeah <laughs> so you have no problem finding those um, and then Aspen also will send you to learn about certain things so my office does Invisalign I got sent to what we call lift training so you have so many opportunities to go learn about whatever you could ever want to learn about. I know more about implants than 
truly a hygienist should, but there's so many CEs on them. I just <laughs> do them. <laughs> you could start our CE program. Oh, go ahead. You got them all. I just said you got them all. <laughs> I mean, you could you could start a CE program. I think today with Aspen and and if you did every one of them, I don't know if you'd be done this year. That's how many are in our vault that are available. But we do have these important ones that these guys were talking about that are specific to what we do a lot in practice. Um, all right, let's look at our next one. Oh, one of these I'm really gonna love asking, but I'm gonna ask the one before. Uh, once you become a dental hygienist with Aspen, is there a daily, weekly, monthly metrics, et cetera, you have to met, meet? So Zulette, do you wanna talk a little bit about um, uh, metrics or um, meeting metrics or meeting any quotas or anything like that? Um, yeah, so as far as we do have a, a metric system with us that we, we like to, in a way, uh, look at and uh, understand and comprehend as to being our own CEOs, our own hygiene business, we need to know how our business is going. Mm -hmm. um, with that, that doesn't mean that we have, a, we have a quota as to how much we need to make in any way, shape or form. So what I like about Aspen is that they give us the autonomy to actually create our own schedules, to make sure that we take care of the patients, to make sure that our patients are safe at all times. So that's our main goal, especially nowadays with COVID, we making sure that you know our schedules are like certain amount of people in the office. It's like, how are you gonna create that, the metrics, right? We do follow metrics, but it's not something that we rule by. We yeah. like to follow it as, you know, as we go, but you know, every day is different. Every day you will have a good day, a good busy day. That's what I like to call it, a good busy day. And other days you just see one patient, two patient, and that's still okay, you know? And that's what I get from, from metrics also right now. If I can think about something else, I will, I'll let you know. <laughs> I always think about what Maureen said. She's one of the um, dental hygiene vice presidents. And she always said, it's like a dashboard. It's there, but you're driving the car. So you need to drive the car. It's telling you, are you safe? Do you have enough energy? You know, is, is this car going to run? But you don't need to be staring at the metrics and focusing on the metrics. You need to be focusing on what you're doing and driving the car. I thought we thought that was a really good way of putting it. Like, it's there for you to know what's going on, but it's not the end all be all. Um, Holly, as far as metrics, um, any, anything to add there? Uh, it was once you become a dental hygienist with Aspen, are there daily, weekly, monthly metrics you have to meet? Have to, I would say no. Yeah, you don't really have to meet any metrics. Um, my office manager, I'm sure this has been said somewhere else in Aspen, but she's the one who said it to me. So I'm gonna give her credit. She said, drive your metrics with your hygiene business. Do not let your metrics drive your business. So you, if you are providing comprehensive care to your patients and you are giving them the best treatment plan that you possibly can and, you know, motivating them and getting them into your chair and getting their hygiene done, keeping them on a good track, providing them what they need, your metrics will all be green. You'll pass the flying colors essentially the only time that you're going to have an issue is if you are not providing patients with the care that they need or you're not invested in your own hygiene success so there are goals for our metrics but no one's going to come knocking on your door if you are below in any aspect of it no i love that you know that's that's the mantra that i've heard over and over again is do the right thing by your patients and the business will follow. And that's so true with dental hygiene. If you're just doing what you're supposed to do and taking care of patients, like you don't really have to, you know, if you're doing your car's maintenance and you're filling up the tank, you don't really have to worry about uh, it running, right? So it's kind of similar. I love that. Really, really good point. Um, okay, let me read our next one. This one I love because I know Zoo, I know we were all three just talking about how much we, you guys like, like your doctors. Um, so what are dentists like at Aspen and are they easy to work with? I'll let Holly start first. Holly, what's it like to work? Cause you have, you have many dentists in your practice. <laughs> so can you share what's it like to work with the dentists that you work with? 
Yeah, so we have three. We have um, our POP doctor, his name is Dr. Ahmad. So he owns our office and another office. And then we have two other doctors. One of them's right out of school. And then the other one has been with us for about a year. Um, the great thing is that they're all, all different and they all do their business different. I have never had an issue working with any of the doctors at my practice. They are very trusting as far as hygiene goes. So if you feel as if a patient needs certain treatment, they give you the ability to give the patient that treatment and they back you 100%. Um, all of my doctors have given me opportunities to learn anything that I wanna learn so that I can educate my patients further on anything. I feel as if they treat me like I'm a provider, I'm equal to them. They respect me and, and they all care about me as a person. So I don't just show up to work and I'm just a figure walking throughout the office with them. Um, you develop relationships with them and become really good friends. And that's important, especially because you're working together all day, every day. I love that. And I think part of, of what you're saying is systems within Aspen, because we have the system where you two, you work together and you fill out basically a form of what of agreeing on what you think perio is together. Not something that Aspen comes up with for you, but you can, so it really takes away any guesswork. Cause I remember when I worked private practice and I, I loved my dentist and I don't want, and this is, I, I think private practice is right for a lot of people. And I don't want to say anything negative about it. Cause I don't really have anything negative to say, but one thing that would happen is I would have a patient who was very clinically similar to another patient and one would be profi and one would be perio or one would be SRP and one would be all oh, this one's just a profi. And it would drive me crazy <laughs> because I'm a hygienist, right? So I like AAP guidelines. I like everything to fit in neat boxes. And um, I think there were a lot of emotions that were probably playing in these clinical changing decisions. And you don't get as much of that at Aspen because of the way that it's structured. So I always felt like that was a big bonus, like, oh, Thank goodness. Like we can just say like, well, what did we agree to? So, okay. So that's what it is. <laughs> so zoo, same question. And I know, uh, I know your answer and I'm excited for you to share stories about your doctor, but what's it like working with your doctor at Aspen Dental? Oh my goodness. I have uh, three awesome doctors too. One is a P POP, uh, Dr. Lee. She is supportive funny. She is a sweet lady. I love her. She comes to the, to our office to help us and support the other dentists. But right now we do have um, Dr. Martin and uh, Dr. Lay. She's recently graduated um, from a dental school. So I was telling Emily how, you know, some sometimes you're going to get those days that you're like, oh, you know, I just, I just want to get this, you know, this hour and I just where is where are you with the exam and and I keep looking and finally there is like like long haul um and there there he comes Dr. Martin at the end and the first thing he does is like kind of like I'm ready I'm ready to go and I'm like oh my gosh and the only thing that I see from him is like dancing through the hall and like coming and like getting closer to my my room and I'm like oh my gosh I cannot deal with your dog but you know if you're having that's what I love about my doctors because they can tell and because we all a family, we all support each other. It's like, they already know when you're having a bad day, they already know when you're like serious for whatever reason, or you're sick or you name it, they already know. And they just lovely and gladly will make that change for you. So after that, I was like, you know, that's fine. I got it. I got it. I'm being moody. I got it. <laughs> you cannot yeah, be in a bad mood around your teams in that no, way. <laughs> I, I can. I can. And, and, you know, it, and I return that at, at the same time when I see someone like having like a frown is like, hey, you know, here, Starbucks for you. You know, it's, it's always fun to, to have that. My doctors are great. I, that's all I have to say. My doctors are great. And kind of piggybacking, people were asking earlier about like opportunities for growth. Um, our doctors and our managers and people that we work with all have opportunities for leadership training. And, and I think that makes a difference because if you're in a typical place, you know, that's more of a choice for people where here, like it's built into our systems that you would go through some pretty regular leadership courses. And I think that helps with parts of the reason that our culture is is kind of goofy kind of fun 
um, it's it's just built around the culture of Aspen and there there is actual training that, that helps us get there. So I wanted to read a comment. Somebody wrote, that's good to hear. We've heard some horror stories. Oh, I'm sorry. We all have though. There's always dental tea to spill. Um, and not for Aspen though, just they said for any relationships. Yeah. Yeah, that, that can be hard. Um, and, and I can see why you'd wanna ask some good interview questions to make sure you don't end up in a, a situation like this. We've got one question that's kind of going back to another. It says, going back to, back to the metrics conversations, are, is there a metric monetary based? Okay, so I'm gonna re rephrase it um, so that, that I know you two will be like, okay, I totally get it. How are we paid? <laughs> so. <laughs> I'm just going to ask the easy way. How are we paid? Um, Holly, I know you are in their area, so you probably have a better idea about the range than I do. Um, so can you speak to um, pay range on the hour and how the um, how a hygienist gets paid with Aspen? Yeah, so I'm not sure about other people, but I've spoken to a couple of people in this area as far as their hourly rate. It's anywhere from, I'd say 37 to 40 an hour, just when you're right out of school and you're brand new. Every month, there is an opportunity for bonuses based on your hygiene revenue. So they kind of take how much you are earning, how much you're spending on supplies, how much you're making hourly to determine whether or not you get that production-based bonus. So no matter what, at the end of the day, you're paid for the hours that you were at work. Um, there's no like, I mean, at least for my office, I don't clock out when I don't have a patient, none of that. Mm -hmm. So you show up to work, you're paid the whole time you're there, no matter what you're doing. Um, and so you have your hourly salary that you get and then there's also certain incentives depending on what sort of things you do in your office. So my office does Invisalign. So there's incentives involving Invisalign and talking to patients about that and them accepting treatment. So at the end of the day, you are paid appropriately, at least, well, cause I'm in Spokane. So people here get paid a little bit less than the Seattle area over there. It's a little bit more, um, but you then on top of all of that get more incentives that make it even better. <laughs> and there, the incentives aren't really based off of metrics because that's kind of what the person was asking. It's yeah. it's based off a of gross profit. So, you know, after you pay your hours, pay your supplies that you ordered and everything, what's left over, part of that is how you're, how you're going to get an incentive. Yeah. Zoo, anything to add to the incentive? I'm smiling at her because I used, I used to manage her and she incentivizes very well. <laughs> I tried. I tried. With that, <laughs> with that saying, um, yes, something that what Holly was saying too is like um, we get paid appropriately, right? It's like for us in Tucson, in Tucson, Arizona, it might be a, a, a different uh, hourly base that you get getting out of school. Um, but something that I like to add is that you're not you're not forced to do. Um, you're not here to sell anything. You're not here to push anything. Um, like you were saying, as far as the metrics, you you follow it, you you see where you at, but at the same time, it's like the the bond that you get with your with your patient is pretty much what is going to give you all the rewards that you need. And you know, as far as the bonuses, bonuses are great to be honest with you. It's it's like I started noticing at the beginning, it was kind of like, I don't know, I don't think this will happen for me. And, but, <laughs> you know, it happened. You know, this, you know this, but, you know, after a month or two, I was like, oh, okay, I can do this. Yay. So it, it's great. And like what Holly was saying is like, they're all their incentives. Uh, Invisalign, that's a great one too. So it's like, I'm, I'm happy. I'm happy to be, you know, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they're really nice to have. So you get a competitive hourly rate and then you also um, can bonus. So it's, it's really, um, it's, it, when you add that and then you add benefits on top of it, it's really great compensation. Yeah. Um, no, and, I you. You can, and I think you can make a decision too with Aspen is in, if you want to start as a part-time or if you want to start as a full-time, you know, full-time starts at 32 hours a week. So you know, you, you would know where you want to be. So you know how, how much you want to work too. So 
that also makes makes a difference as far as the you know what we all like is the work life balance that you know Aspen is providing for us. That actually bleeds perfectly into one of the questions they were asking about um, work life balance. So you spoke a little bit to it. Um, anything else to add there, Zulette, with work life balance? Yeah, I mean, in, in a little bit more to the scheduling, uh, how as a hygienist, we create our own schedule, right? Uh, we we want to make sure that there's a hygienist for every single patient that they want to get started. And we give the comprehensive, um, you know, the best care that we can. Now, with that saying, that doesn't mean that if we have maybe an hour, the last cancellation of the, of the day, um, we can go home, you know, if you want to. There's always something to do. That's what I'm trying to say. There's always something to do at Aspen. It's just that, you know, you get the opportunity to say, I need to leave from this hour to this hour. I need to step out for this reason. I, if I have a personal appointment, I know I can communicate with my office manager, my region manager, and they will make it work for me. So that way I get you know, the, the care that I also need as a, as a, as a person. So you, you get those times, you get your vacation time, you get your sick time. Um, everything, I mean, is part of your 401k. It's like, there's a lot of things that bring that work-life balance. And, and, you know, it's with my office, we all know, you know, who has how many kids and we all support each other because if in, there's an assistant, they cannot make it that day, guess what? there's another one stepping in and, and helping her. So it's, it's great to have that for sure. Very cool. Holly, how about you? How's your work-life balance? It's good. Um, it was, usually my office has two hygienists and now I'm the only one right now. So I am working more days than I used to. So I used to just work four days. I take Friday off. I said, you know what? I'd like a three day weekend. I'm going to do this. So I used to do that. Um, now that I'm the only one, I do work Fridays, but I only work a half day. So I'm off at 12 makes it real easy. My office is open on Saturdays and I just had a community, like a conversation with my office manager. I said, Hey, <laughs> I enjoy my Saturday and Sunday is there any way that we can make the hygiene work just throughout the week? And they had no problem with that. So it's just a conversation that has to be had. Uh, it's the same as Uleth said, I can say, hey, can I come in an hour late? I have a doctor's appointment, can I leave an hour early? Whatever it may be. And I've never had my office not work with me. And then on top of that, on the other end of things, if you stay an extra hour to provide patient care, come in an extra hour, at least in my um, territory, we're doing a competition right now. So the more hours you add to help patients, someone's going to win a prize. So if you are staying late and you are making the time for your patients and expanding your care, they know that and they recognize it and they appreciate it. Oh, that's really cool. Are you winning? <laughs> I'm so competitive. I'm sorry. Really, are you, Holly? <laughs> I'm not sure that I'm winning, but someone somewhere is. <laughs> someone somewhere is winning, Emily. I'm so competitive. I'm like, are you winning? <laughs> oh, that's funny. Um, well, that's really cool. That's those are really good points. I I, I wanted to go back to what Zulette was saying. She said, um, you know, you get your vacation when you want it. And again, I loved my private practice. It was a great experience. It's not one, you know, I don't have, I wouldn't say, oh, you should never do that to someone if that's what they wanted to do. But my doctor had a place in Cabo and it was like a timeshare and he was, uh, he could go there in uh, June and July. I don't have kids. That's not when I like to take my vacation because when everybody takes their vacation um, and he, uh, every year we got vacation but it was when he took his vacation. So your friend's getting married in May figure it out. <laughs> you know what I mean? It was just, it's a lot more, you know, at Aspen, when people ask off, it's for when they want off and, and most requests from what I've seen have been accepted. Um, so it's, it's really neat to see that difference, um, of having, and, and I don't think that that was anything bad on a private practice. I mean, it's small, there's eight people. It's a big deal when someone's not there, but when you have a bigger organization and people that can fill in, you know, it's kind of an advantage that you have that you have more flexibility with your vacations and things. All right. I thought I had another good one. So we had people asking um, about the boards. 
um, that takes me back, right? That that's never a <laughs> that's never a fun feeling. Um, but they're asking, and I'm I'm I don't know if they mean clinical or written, um, but they're asking how you all prepared for your boards. So Holly, um, what are what's your best tip and trick for somebody who's getting ready for their clinical or their written or both, however you want to answer it, boards? Ah, uh, so for the national board exam of dental hygiene. How I prepared for the written one was I went through all of the PowerPoints and lectures, just read through them, refreshed. And then I don't know if this is still a thing, but there was a such thing called student RDH. And it was an online, you bought the membership. I think me and four of my classmates split it. And it had all the subjects dating back to microbiology. And you could go through, read, about everything and then take tests. So that was like an all in one place that we all studied. And then for clinical boards, I didn't really practice beforehand, but uh, we did three times, I think mock boards in school. So by the time that the clinical came around, we had run through it a couple of times. Cool. Zoo, what, what are your thoughts? Well, seven years ago, let me see. <laughs> oh, I well, remember it, I remember. Truth be told, Zula, in all honesty, is like a genius. So if she says she didn't study, that doesn't mean you don't have to because she's really, really, really a genius. So, but okay. Zula, go ahead. <laughs> um, yes, uh, clinical, clinical boards, I remember doing the same idea as Holly did, um, mock boards uh, through school, which it helps you actually because, um, I remember the first one that we did, I was like, everything was fine. Everything was like, yeah, I, I passed this. I, if I pass this, I can pass the other one. Um, or I, I can pass the, the good one, right? Um, the second mock board, I failed it completely. Um, I, I felt so bad about it, but you learn from it because you need to learn what are the mistakes that you're more likely to make. Um, even when it was something very simple, and for me, I was like, how did I, how, how could I do that? Is that you're not supposed to put your name in there. And guess what I did? I put my name on the mock board. It's like, they saw it as like, done, you're done. I was like, no. Um, but as far as the, the, the written exam, I had opportunities to get um, the, not, it was not a national board. It was something like a dental hygiene board book. Like a, I remember book, like a Pearson yeah. or yeah uh, I can if I remember I'll send it to you so you probably you can share with the, whoever asked the question but um, I remember like downloading uh, apps um, everything related to dental hygiene anything that it will um, test me at 100% when I was like having a break with the coffee I will test myself in that sense Whatever I don't, I don't remember, I will go ahead and get my book with me and, and review that. I was able to go to a review book actually um, in, in Phoenix and there was like a, a day from nine in the morning to seven o'clock at, at night. But it was so awesome because they review everything that they know there's a good chance they will be on the, on the exam. So that gave me a good, um, like a, a way of being confident in a way although you already know those, those yeah. answers, but I just needed to know that, you know, I just needed to have that confirmation pretty much. So, yeah, I mean, anything you can find is, is great. Uh, whatever you're into, if you're into the book or you're like more like playing games and, and checking on the app, that will work too. Yeah, yeah, I agree. It's been a while, but I did a little teaching. So I remember somewhat but like a Pearson board review book or a, a board review book like that is really nice. Cause if you open the first page, it breaks down how, like how the test is, or actually you can go to your, your test website. This is for the written and it's going to break down what subjects and what their weighted areas are. And then I would say, evaluate what you think you were great at, evaluate what you think you struggled with. Um, start yeah. with your struggles because you can you'll have time to go over those a couple of times and set dates stick with your calendar stick with your dates when I saw students who struggled it was usually because they kind of waited to the last second if you just organize yourself which hygienists are good at 
um, you can really um, schedule that time for you, you to study. And that really helps. And know that your school and all the stuff that you've already done has prepared you. You're just reviewing, like Zulette said, to build your confidence and be 100% sure. Um, for the board boards, get together and get a, a second patient just in case or a, a backup patient. <laughs> That's my great <laughs> advice because there's, I actually had to use mine when I took my boards, my person didn't qualify. You want to see tears. I mean, that was some ugly crying. I thought my whole world ended. Um, but luckily there was somebody in the waiting room who totally qualified and everything worked out, but, um, that would be my strongest advice. Have that person in there. And, um, you know, don't ask your teachers whether or not the person qualifies, like look and see if they do, because I, I did that and it put her in an awkward situation and me in an awkward situation. And ultimately it was up to me, right? So look at the qualifications, make sure you know your patient qualifies um, and be confident in, 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 that you do know or bring another student in or, or several people in, but go with what you know. Um, but you guys are gonna do great. You go to a great school. It just feels like it'll never happen. <laughs> <laughs> it did for me anyway. Okay, let's see what else we've got. Ooh, okay, this is the perfect last one that I waited for. Um, they wanna know pros and cons or what you love the most um, and what you like the least about Aspen. So Holly, I'm gonna start with you. What do you love the most? Or do you want me to, do you want me to start with me to give you a second to think? Oh, it's, it's you you're good, go. she's got it, okay. <laughs> Holly, uh, what do you like the most or what's the biggest pro of working for Aspen? And what do you like the least or what's the biggest con about working with Aspen? I think, and this is just my own personal experience. I think the biggest con isn't actually anything to do with working for Aspen. It's people having a set idea of what Aspen is. So people hear that you work for a DSO or what they think is corporate and they have a plethora of just assumptions of what goes on in your office and everything and just re-educating them and letting them know that your office is great, your doctors are great, your patients love you, all that sort of stuff. I just think there's some sort of preconceived notion that goes on somewhere along the lines and that can be kind of frustrating because you know you show up every day you know that you love your work you know you have a great office and your patients love your doctors love you so that is my only frustration I have no complaints about my actual office and I think my most favorite thing about Aspen is just that when you show up every day it is like a family so you show up and all of your dental assistants, um, like you guys were saying earlier, they know about your life. They know what's going on. They, you know, your office manager knows you, your doctors know you, the staff jokes around, you have a good time. You just never feel like you're showing up to work and you have to get to your job and do all this stuff and then go home. Uh, there's some days where I stay at work clocked off to talk to a dental assistant for 15 minutes because we didn't get a chat that day and it's fun to catch up. So I think just showing up and you truly enjoy your job. You're not looking at your clock wondering, when do I get to go home? I love that. I love that. Zulette, for you, what's your um, biggest pro or thing that you like the most and biggest con thing you like the least about working with Aspen? Uh, let's see. Let's see. Um, cons, really, I... I think it will be more like a personal way too. Um, I'm my biggest critic. So I'm always going to try to do um, either perfect things or I'm going to try and avoid cut myself and whatever I need to do. Um, you know, but at the same time is like the culture in my office is like, they just give me the opportunity and the confidence that that I need to be the perfect hygienist. With Aspen, I to be honest with you, I have not found anything, uh, and I'm gonna say yet. Um, I'm just pretty much two years into working with Aspen. So far, it's been great. Um, and something like going to what would be a pro as far as working for Aspen is is because of the culture, the, the, the family that we can all have. And we also can provide that to someone else. 
meaning you get the opportunity to go and and give back to your community. That's something that I learned here in, in Aspen. And when you get out of school, you're thinking, I'm doing this to help people. I'm, I'm doing dental hygiene because I wanna help people. And personally, that was me. So mm -hmm. knowing that I have the opportunity to go overseas, go to Peru, go to Honduras, go to um, Japan, go anywhere in the world, honestly, and being supportive 100% uh, by Aspen and send you away for a week or two on those places and you help people for free, that's the greatest reward. So for me, I will say that's, that's what I always look. It's like, what can, the, what can this office provide for me? So for me to be better in that sense. So that would be my pro in that case. Yeah, I, you know, we've talked about so much today and I forgot about our humanitarian programs. So we do that twice a year. Of course, right now, COVID slowing things down where you apply and uh, Aspen will send <laughs> you to where, wherever the mission is and just serve those, the people in that area um, for a couple of weeks. So it's a really, it's a really cool um, part of the organization. And then something that uh, we all get to do, and it's one of my favorite days is our um, um, when the mouth mobile shows up and we get to go in the mouth mobile and serve our veterans. So that travels the country and everybody gets to pop it or everybody who volunteers gets to pop in and like, uh, clean our veterans teeth at no cost. And then our veterans, um, service day, I'm spacing our name. What's that called there? Day of service. Day of service. Day of service. <laughs> Such an easy name. But I, I, that's another fun day where you get to volunteer and serve our vets and um, super appreciative people who have done so much for this country. And it's a really rewarding experience. Thank you for, thank you for bringing those parts of, the, uh, of Aspen to light too. I, I had, we talked about so much today and I forgot about those. That's a really good perk. Um, so in closing, um, I want to ask you guys what, if you had to describe your experience with Aspen Dental in one word, what would it be? I'll give you guys a second. You got it. <laughs> I know like words, you're like, don't steal my word. That's what I always think. If there's more than one person, I'm like, don't steal my word. My word Holly. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Holly, what's your word? Oh, I don't have one yet. I'll let you go first. I'm trying to think. Okay. I hope I don't steal your word, but for me is respect. Respect, uh, having the autonomy to be a hygienist and helping my patients, educate my patients 100% and, and having the support of my doctors and, and the full, you know, the whole organization is it's the greatest thing. So respect for me, that would be my word. I love that. I haven't heard that one before, but it fits so well. I really like that. All right, Holly. And it, it is not that I'm trying to be I hear anything like that. It's like no divas here, but <laughs> you know how, you know, people think of hygienists as like, oh, she's a diva. No, 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 no. It's like, <laughs> no. respect it. But we I did work respected. really hard for this. <laughs> exactly. We all work very hard for it. <laughs> Holly, you ready? Yes. <laughs> word. My word would be support, uh, just because I feel like on both ends of Aspen, you are always getting support. So you are supporting your patients every single day to their journey for a healthy mouth. And then on the other end of things, you're getting support as a hygienist from everyone in your office. So you are supporting others, they're supporting you. It's a big cycle of support. I love that. I think. I think that's a, a really, really cool one too. And I would agree, we get a ton of support. Um, mine was really similar. I was thinking advocacy, because I feel like in the role that you're taking now, that TMHS role, I really got to advocate for the for the hygienists and, and work for them and help bring what they wanted to their, um, to their jobs. And in this new role, I really feel like I get to advocate again for hygienists and for hygiene careers and um, careers have always been really important to me, not just my career, but everyone's career. So I just love like the, like advocating for hygienists. So um, I feel like Aspen gives me kind of a unique place to do that, that uh, nothing that I've ever seen like that before. So 
Um, you guys have been an absolute pleasure, a whole lot of fun. Students, you're amazing. You literally asked so many great questions. I didn't even have to throw any in. You, you asked all the questions, which I really appreciate. I did want to mention, because you guys are in Washington, that Holly has an opening in her office. Holly, you want to plug your office? Yes, yeah, definitely. So we're in Spokane here. Um, they are looking for a hygienist to come. Um, actually, they eventually will want to. Uh, and in our entire region, um, they're looking for a hygienist. So if you are sick of the West Side um, and the rain, <laughs> come to Spokane. There's four seasons. It snows and it's sunny here. So and I work with an amazing team and this is a beautiful area to live. So if you're looking to get out of the Seattle area, come this way. Come there. And I don't mean to outshine yours with the big bonus, but if you know someone who's looking now in East Wenatchee and Yakima, they're offering a $7,500 sign-on bonus. Mm -hmm. um, if you all are like, how do I get a hold of somebody about either of these? You can contact me. Um, I will pop my name in the chat. And I think you guys all have me on Facebook and everything too, because I try to get the information out. So get a hold of me. I can send you to a recruiter. Um, if you, if it is early for you, it is never too early to start talking to a recruiter. Um, I I would advise. I mean, there you may not get hired today, but being on their radar early is never a bad thing. So if this is something that's interesting for you, um, or if there's another DSO you're interested in. I would get to a recruiter um, and and speak with them early, not later. So, all right. Well, you guys, it's been a sincere pleasure. Um, I've had a wonderful time. I bet you guys are ready for your Friday nights, though. <laughs> so I'll let you go be with your fur babies. <laughs> you guys have an awesome evening and a great weekend. Thank you. You Thank too. You. Thanks. Bye. Bye.